In this video, I'm going to explain the basic principles behind creating mosaics in Affinity Designer with my Mosaic Maker. The pack contains a set of mosaic brushes, which you can see here, and a complementing set of fill styles and now I'll explain how to use both of these elements in order to create a very simple design. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is create a basic circle, which is going to work as the background for the design. So I'm going to use the ellipse tool and I'm holding down shift so that I create a completely regular ellipse like so, and I'm gonna color it blue. The next step is to create a tile border. And to do that, I'm going to copy the same ellipse and paste it exactly over the top. And then I'm going to clear the fill color here. And I'm going to select one of the brushes by clicking on an icon here on the brushes panel, like so. And as you can see, the default color is black. So I'm just going to change that up here in my swatches panel by clicking on the stroke color and selecting a color like so. So the next thing I'm going to do is shrink this slightly. Um, as you can see, it overlaps the edge there. Um, so we will lock the aspect ratio there on the transform tab. And let's try 95% in size. It's probably still a little bit big, so try that again maybe 90% and then we'll select both of the circles and we'll align it horizontally and vertically. As you can see, it's still not quite right in size, so, so we'll enlarge the border here. And then select the two again and realign them horizontally and vertically, that's much better. It's worth showing you at this stage that you can adjust the width of the um, tile brushes quite easily by just adjusting the stroke width. So back on the stroke panel, at the moment we have 15.4 width. If we go slightly larger, you can see it gets bigger and smaller like so. Now it's also worth noting that there are a number of different tile brushes. Um, so at the moment we have a repeat of five different tiles along the outside of the brush. Um, and we have alternative five tile brushes there, like so. We've got a four tile, a three tile, a one tile, and lots of other different patterns there. Um, I'm gonna revert back to a five tile because I like that one best. Before continuing with the design, I briefly wanted to explain that you can also draw freehand with the brushes. Um, to do this, simply select the vector brush tool, select one of the brushes from the tab by clicking on it, and draw like so. You can repose it afterwards using the node tool here. and recolor it as you would a normal vector stroke. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to flood an area very quickly full of tiles. Um, and I'm gonna use the styles here to do that. So the first thing I'll do is add a new layer, which is above our border layer at the moment. And I'm going to rename that fill. And on that layer, I'm going to place another ellipse roughly in the center there. And all you do to apply one of the styles is simply click on one of these icons here on the panel, like so. And after you've added the pattern, you can scale it and rotate it and you do that by simply going to the fill tool here. And you notice that these 
some arm icons appear and you can use those to move your pattern about or to rotate it or to shrink it. So it's one of Affinity's most useful tools, I think. If you want to adjust the proportions of your pattern style, then all you do is make sure this maintain fill aspect ratio button is clicked off there, and then you can adjust the arms independently, like so. If you want to change the color of your tile fills, this is really, really easy to do, but it's a slightly different process than changing the um, brush tiles. So what you do is select an object which has a style applied to it, like so, and you go up to the layer menu and go to new adjustment and use any of the uh, color adjustments here. Now, I think the best one to start with is recolor. As you can see, that's jumped to um, the last change I made. But if you adjust the sliders here, you get all sorts of different colors. So adjusting the saturation reduces the brightness. Um, the lightness obviously makes it darker or lighter. And the hue changes the actual color. Now the great thing about adjustment layers is they're non-destructive. So um, I'm going to close that down there and you'll see this little icon here. This represents the adjustment layer. So if I wanted to edit it again, I simply double click it there and it comes straight back up and I can change it again as I'd like. And if I just wanted to delete it to go back to what I wanted before, simply click the delete button like so. One final thing I'd like to explain in this tutorial is how to crop groups of brush strokes. So I have here a bunch of just vector strokes with uh, the tiles applied to them and I would like to crop them in the shape of this M. So this, this is literally just a type letter like so and you'll see I've got it above my group here on the uh, layers panel and so all I do to crop the group is to literally drag the group of brush strokes into the text icon here and as you can see it's cropped now at the moment you can see the text color here is still visible um, and that's set to black um, and you can still change it as you would normally by going to the color tab here. So if you want to lighten it, simply just do that. Or if you want it to be no color at all, simply select the letter and set to nothing, like so. It's a really, really useful thing. It allows you to create mosaic text really quickly and easily. Cropping isn't limited to typed letters. You could also use um, a vector shape a great advantage about cropping um, groups of brush strokes in this way as opposed to erasing is that you can move the, them about within the letter or vector shape afterwards. To do this, simply select the group and not the letter, select the move tool and you can just move it about like that. If you have any questions about the pack, feel free to leave a comment or drop me an email. I hope you enjoy making your own mosaics. Thanks for watching.